Hi, welcome, welcome. Herzlich willkommen and welcome to the online version of the Border Music Camp Hunting Horn Club. For those of you who missed out, last year was the inauguration of the BMC HHC. Um, it was a group of really cool Border Music Campers and tutors who got together and made horns out of garden hose and random household uh, things. Um, and we had a lot of fun learning some cool hunting horn moves and yeah, hunting horn tones, of course. And this year, the plan was to extend the family and look at other horns. And because we can't be together, I thought maybe I'd just take this video to introduce you to one horn in particular, the Alp horn. Firstly, we need to go and find an Alp horn. And where better than in the woods? Back in the day, they used to make alpons out of trees that literally grew in alpon shape. They grew on a, on a steep hill and they had to grow out and then up with say hello sun. And so they just cut them and they hollowed them out and then they put them back together, they wrapped them around a bit. Um, yeah, usually made out of pine trees or something similar. So we're not in Switzerland, but you know, this is the Lippische Schweiz, which is the equivalent of the German equivalent of Switzerland. <laughs> um, so let's see what we can find. Check that out. Let's keep going. <laughs> There's an awkwardly growing tree. So, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's steep enough here, um, but maybe we'll still be able to find something. See this? This is, this is perfect. It would be perfect if it was big enough. We've got the right angle, but unfortunately, uh, it's got a way to go yet, and actually I think it's already dead. <laughs> He's a no-hoper. <laughs> so, we're not having much luck, are we? Oh, hang on a minute. It's, it's my alpine. <laughs> What's that doing here? Must have left it here last time. Oh, Rieke! Oh, hi! <laughs> you here? I'm trying to find my horn. But this is not good. But the length is right. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah, I tried this one. It could be better. It could be better. I try this one. <laughs> nice. Okay, so now I have a horn. Let's go back to my apartment. Okay, so uh, I was gonna show you guys uh, my new Alphorn, but um, I have a bit of an issue here. <sighs> uh, just how long is an Alphorn? Well, my Alphorn is an F. Uh, 
Alphon comes in different keys, but um, as we learned last year in, in the club, um, is that the length of the horn determines which key it's in. And our hunting horns are also in F, so I guess um, we're going to have to change the camera view so that we can see the horn. <laughs> but I'm going to measure it. One minute, 37 seconds later. So I had to tidy around here a bit so I have enough space. Um, so in F, we have around three and a half meters, a bit longer. Um, the Alpine is actually the, the national, it's actually a national symbol for Switzerland. Um, and most of the Alpines in Switzerland are actually in a different key. They're in F sharp or G flat, which is 20 centimeters shorter, or around 20 centimeters shorter than an F horn. But most of the horn players I've come across in Germany, they usually play on an F Alpine. And for us horn players, it's much easier in terms of pitching. But anyway, back to hunting horn in F and alp horn in F. Let's see if this actually works. Um, so I can't really hold it on the instrument, but um, you see, I've started where the mouthpiece is. Okay. Oh look, it's the same length. <laughs> Who would have thought? Let's check it to make sure we've got the right pitch anyway. How about that? <clears throat> this should work. I tuned them this morning. Pretty spot on. Okay, so now we've checked. They're both in F. We can welcome the Alphorn to the, the hunting horn club. We can all play in F, it's great. Um, but we should probably hit the hills. That's, that's where the Alphorn is at its finest. Um, and it's a bit cramped here in my apartment. So let's get going. And half the fun, <laughs> half the fun is transporting this beast. So backstage, um, we can actually take this horn apart. Thank goodness, because it is rather quite long and it's very cramped in my apartment. Um, oh wait, I already said that. Oh my god, it's in three bits. Um, it's still a bit big, but I'm sure we can cope with that. I'll just get the bag. Okay, let's hit the Alps. So how are we going to get to the Alps? Well, because of this bag, I can pretty much carry my Alp on like it's a backpack. Which means I can take it on my bike. Which means I can go in a car. Which means I can I can walk. But I'm not going to because the bike is so much quicker. On the way to the hills, I thought we'd make a quick stop. A friend told me that the Alpine floats and that it's a way of seeing the sound waves uh, reflected in the water. The idea with, with splitting notes, um, the waves aren't as strong from the split notes, so the further, further away you are from the horn, uh, the less you can hear them, or they disappear into the stronger, more perfect waves that we produce, which are the, the right notes. Anyway, let's see if this works out. So it should be easy to see from the, the lower notes. They have the biggest waves. I'll play the natural tone row. getting um, more and more cool very cool so I guess that's what's happening in real life well in yeah in the sound waves that's that are traveling through the air so there you go there's visual proof aside from all that it's an amazing acoustic on this water and with the the buildings reflecting the sound it's amazing I, I've got to get all the down here it's, it's our new favorite performance spot yeah but uh, Storm is coming and we've still got to catch up with Ulrika, so we should probably get going. <laughs> huh? 
So when you're right up in the bell, it sounds awful. It's, it's really raw and um, I recommend anyone who comes to listen to us that they keep a distance to us. I mean, not just because of Corona. <laughs> Alpon started out as an instrument for communication. They used to, uh, because the sound travels really well on the hills, we're about to test this, they used to communicate from one hill to, the, to another to say uh, we're ready to go or something's happening. They also say they were used for calling the cows home and um, also for serenading them while they were, whilst they were being milked, which is also very interesting. But let's just, let's just start with the communication. Uh, let's see if Ulrika gets me, if she can uh, echo me. To, to test this, uh, I've sent Ulrika um, across the way. We'll see how far she, like how far she can go. If we can still hear her, if we can still communicate. Now she's going even further. It's so amazing, she's so far away, but I feel like she's standing right next to me. I don't know if you can hear that on the video. We don't need to talk to each other anymore. We could just communicate like this. <laughs> Hi Ulrika, I'm running late. Toot, toot, toot. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, she gets it. <laughs> she knows I'll be there soon. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Ja, liebe Musikerinnen und Musiker in Australien, ich grüße euch aus Deutschland und wünsche euch einen ganz schönen Musikkurs. Hier fängt jetzt der Sommer an, bei euch der Winter, glaube ich, ne? Stimmt das? Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's cold in Albury. And yeah, maybe see you next year. Ciao. <laughs> Bye.
Thank you.